practice this week, uh, offensively, defensively, special teams wise. Uh, I thought the guys were sharp into the game, looking forward to the game, and uh, executed very well. One of our better weeks, I, and I that we're getting healthy. And I think our young guys are really developing into the offense and defense and special teams as far as not just knowing what to do, but how to do it and doing it consistently. And it's really upped our play and allowed us to call things differently on both sides of the ball, even to improve and add things to your repertoire and but very comfortable with more players in the game, which adds more depth to the team and getting more reps to the team. So uh, very proud of that and uh, like where we're at right now. I'm looking forward to the challenge we have on Saturday. Questions? How are you, James? And, and you know, we see the good. I'm very good. They're yeah, doing caught the ball excellent. I really do. Coach, with Matthew Thomas now officially cleared, how much of a role will he be able to have in his first game? I think they have a huge role. He's in shape. He's in great condition. But you know, there's packages. I mean, but we have the other guys that are playing too. But we have, a, you know, we have some things for him to do. And feel very comfortable with him in the game, knowing what to do. Very intelligent young man, who has looked very good in practice. A little different than a guy coming off an injury, as opposed to because yeah, he's practiced. Yeah, totally. With because you guys. he's practiced and, he, and he's he got healthy three or four weeks ago. You know, when his ankle got better and just you know really flashes at you at times to play. You know, and I'm sure there'll be a little rust here and there. But you know, he looks really good. I think you said like 20 or 40 snaps for a leg lay. I mean, what would Matthew Thomas's range possibly be? He could be as many as you want. I mean, because he's in, it, it not coming off an injury, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or anything like a leg lay was as far as his hat was. Coach, how's Mario Pender doing? Good. He'll be out for the game, though. He won't play this week. His ankle, but it's, it's healing well. We, we're very encouraged, and I don't think it'll be a long term thing, but you never know about ankles, how they can linger sometimes. But he's doing well, but he won't play this weekend. So the running backs are uh, Dalvin Cook and uh, Carlos, Carlos is, no, Carlos is back healthy. He's practiced all week. Dalvin's in there, Ryan Green. You know, we still got Freddie and uh, uh, Vickers at the uh, fullback, yes. And Vickers, they both can play tailback. Both those guys can be big one-back guys also. How's Carlos looking with the ankle and everything? I'm sorry, he's been fine. He's practiced really well. Moved around extremely well. Looked normal. How great is that Dalvin? You know, those other guys get nicked up and he's kind of been the contact. Uh, I mean, exactly right. Well, he hasn't had as much playing time either. <laughs> <laughs> but when he got it, he's taking advantage of it. And, again, that's what I'm talking about. You feel very comfortable in the game. No, just picking up blitzes like he did last week. Picking up, you know, in practice this week. Just, you watch those young receivers, backs, tight ends, DNs, linemen. Those guys are all just growing as players. And you feel very comfortable in the game now. Jimbo, what was your thoughts when Notre Dame came into the league? Uh, some people, some people were worried that they might knock out an ACC team from the playoff, which gives you another future. quality opponent, which I think is very critical for your schedule, and they have great tradition, so I think it brings a lot of attention to your program, and, that, and those are big time games. Jimbo, coaching with the playoff now, I know you, your approach doesn't change, but does it feel a little different that one loss isn't really going to eliminate you? Yeah, it, it, it does from that, and from that perspective, it does. I mean, all you can do is listen to the news because it's <laughs> y'all are yeah, it's, it's on there all the time. I don't have a chance to do it. That's why I'm in there breaking film down. But yeah, you're all right from that perspective. You're right. Jimbo, sorry. Uh, somebody from the James Spence, the authentication place. I, I can't hear. You. Uh, James Spence, the authenticator with the the James autograph, said that they haven't talked to anybody from Florida State. I was wondering if you had any. I have no, and uh, that's our compliance and the AD and those guys handle all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm coaching football. I think on Tuesday you said that you someone to talk to him. Was that just Mr. No, that's no, no. That was wasn't from us. I didn't say that from us. It was our compliance people were investigating, and AD and all those folks. Chibo, you think this team or your program has bullseye on its back at all? I mean, even oh, just I by nature, winning 23 in a row. I think anytime you're you're successful, people are aware of what you do. But that's part of the territory. That goes with the territory, and that's that's part of the today's world. You, you guys embrace it at all? You talk about it. Same. Yeah, embrace you winning. Know. Embrace being successful. That's what we do, and do things the right way, and keep moving forward. A couple other, and sorry to go back to the autograph stuff, but memorabilia dealers feel that Jameis' stuff came in a, in a sit-down session. Obviously, he told I have no, I, I have no idea about that. That's all into their investigation. I'm not, I'm not an expert, or I don't know anything of those things. That's, that's, I'm not involved in the investigation. I mean, had, had Jameis said anything about how all those autographs might have come out no. there? No, that's, that's between them and their investigation. Jimbo, when it gets noisy in the locker room and you don't want coaches to talk, who do you think the players that stand up and, and take charge of things? Any idea off the top of your head? Yeah, Rashad Green, Jameis, uh, Carlos, uh, Eddie Goldman, Mario Edwards, uh, Jalen Ramsey, PJ Williams, all those guys all do that. And you trust their message? You just have something that you think that you need to orchestrate? Just you trust them to step forward? Yes, because they know how we run things, and I meet with those guys quite often, and I watch them practice, and I know what, they're, what they do. I wouldn't question that at all. Um, Cam said on, I guess it was Monday, that he thought... Cam Irving would be another one. There would be another one. No sway. Trey Jackson. <laughs> Nick won't talk. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> you can't get him to talk either, huh? No. <laughs> uh, Cam on Monday said that he felt a lot of the offensive line issues were mental. I mean, when you watch film, is that what you see, or do you feel there's some physical stuff oh, there, too? See, when you say that, that's 
football issues in general are mental. I mean, they're usually mistakes that you're thinking the wrong thing or seeing the wrong thing. I mean, that is a very, that's a generalization that could go across the board for almost all mistakes. I mean, they all know what to do, and, you know, they could be having a mental lapse or think something else or see the wrong thing. So, I mean, that's a, that'd be a true statement, probably. <laughs> What have you seen from Everett Golson on tape? Huh, a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns, a lot of runs and throws, and uh, a very dynamic guy who's a leader and a winner. Very excellent player, big time player. Coach, recruiting-wise, I know one game doesn't make a big difference, but when it's 8 o'clock, prime time, Notre Dame, and what does that do for the program? Well, I just think the exposure, and, and the kids know that when you come to Florida State and we keep winning and doing the things we do, that these are the kind of prime time games you're in, and that's why you want to go to major universities, have a chance to win championships and be in these marquee matches. Campaign. Who's coming? But like as far as official visits and stuff, you guys look far ahead and say this is the game we want to make sure we get a lot of it. No, I, I don't, we don't always say that. I, I'm not. I don't believe in that. I think it's the convenience of the young man and when it's convenient for him to be here, or whether it's before the season, after the season, during the season, or what game it is. That all bases off their high school schedule, and you know, we've got to give a lot of respect to those guys and those coaches that are in high school football. I mean, and what's best for them to when their kids can, you know, when they have an off week or when they can, tra you know, travel or be or be here. We try to, you know, go by that. Is it different at all just having the team sit at the hotel all day before an 8 o'clock game? Any different trying to keep those guys ready? Or no, I mean, I, we do it a lot. I mean, we did it. I mean, most of your primetime games anymore, and we play a lot of night games, so 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock games are very common. they become more common now probably than not, at least for us. I mean, we play more night games probably than anything. Would that be right? Is that true? Yeah. So far this season, so far. I think you have had more. You have had more, yeah. Jeez, yeah. We have, we've had these yeah, as many, I put it that up. way. That's kind of become more than normal. Yeah. Is McGuire out? This yes, week, he'll be yes, out. probably out. He had better though. His hands, his hands do look pretty good. Jimbo, the team seems to be have, have progressed since the beginning of the year. Is it is it health? Is it maturity? Health Everything. I mean, I think all teams, and, and it's hopefully it, it, it's what all teams should do. You want to get better as you go. You know, and I think it's two things. I think one, again, fitting your role and understanding who you are this year as a player, where your role fits on the team, the youth of the team developing and giving you more depth and quality, so you get the identity. Then I think your health and you know, and just overall knowledge and comfort zone of getting in a routine of doing the same thing weekly. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know, you feel better and you hopefully you can execute better. You feel those little qualities. Do you feel those leadership roles? Yeah, I feel very good about our leadership. We have we have excellent guys, I think it's I really do. Now Jimmy, you've been on you've coached great teams. Yes sir. Here ago. You've coached up and down teams. I'm sure you've coached a bad team along the line somewhere. Um, Something satisfying at all about this group, maybe that because they're young and you're working week to week. To the, the, their togetherness. I mean, their their togetherness and their commitment to each other and their ability to whatever the circumstance in the game, whether you're ahead, behind, it's a scoring match, it's a defensive match, to be able to compete and stay in the moment, and not let adversity bother them. I'm very. I mean, as far as the character of them and how they stay together, and you know, if offense is struggling, defense picks it up. If defense is struggling, offense picks it up, and, or special teams. And a group of guys that really they're fun to coach because they care so much about each other. You think it's worth the most practice? Yeah, I am by far. And I think that's what I want them to understand. I mean, of all the things you come out of a program, accountability, dependability, but then the, the, the love and trust of being in a family and, and that part of it, I think it's very critical. Was there anything, any issue with Jameis's hand or thumb or something like that? Someone said there, there might have been a rap out on the Syracuse game. No, I mean, you put a rap if a guy gets banged or hit like that, but no, he's fine. He's fine. If it is, I hope it stays like that. Was <laughs> 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 he 30 for 30? <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, with, with Sean out, is it John? Jimmy John, John and then Troy. Yes, sir. It seemed like Jameis played flawless against Syracuse. Do you kind of expect that kind of performances? Uh, I mean, Jameis, you know, you, you always expect good, great performances out of him. I mean, that's what he does and, and has played that way. But, you know, he's got he's prepared well. He's had a good week of practice. So hopefully he'll go out. I mean, again, this is a new opponent. That's the thing about ball. You... You can't carry him from week to week. You can learn from your experience, but you got to go out there and do it again the next week. So, hopefully, he'll play very well. You having fun this week? Yes, I am. I have a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoy this town. I love watching young guys really grow and develop into things and handle things. Really. Uh, to find a crumb on the back of the uh, shirts of the lineman is that a? No, that's 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 on that's on. Now, if it was him, it'd be a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's just that's some one of our little sayings that we have and as a team that, you know, is, is, is very important to us when, when we get, you know, our focus and concentration on how we play and what we do.